It's his 10th season on the ice for San Jose. Whether it's a hat trick or netting a wrister, this centerman only has one thing on his mind. Finally capturing the elusive Stanley Cup. Then to the back for a shot. Score! A deflection by Couture! Logan Couture taking it one game at a time. So Logan, obviously we're here at the batting cages, more on that later on in our show, but let's just begin with you. Busted into the NHL at age 20. Pass off to the wing, shot, and a goal! Logan Couture with his first National Hockey League goal here in Detroit. You're about to turn 30 years old, that's hard to believe, where all, where all the years go. How do you know that you've matured? In what ways are you different from 20 to almost 30? Uh, well, a lot of ways, but uh, um, in in hockey, I think um, after my first couple of years, I, I got to learn the league and and learn players, different teams, tendencies, and uh, learn how to be successful. Um, when you play junior and and uh, in the minor leagues, you can get away with a lot of things mm -hmm. that you can't in the NHL. So, um, just learning to to bring it on a consistent basis every night. You know, they say the current NHL is a young man's game, and I'm not saying you're old. Let's yeah. let's put that on record, but how do you keep up with all the youngest of players and, and what tricks have you learned as you have got older to make sure that uh, you kind of cheat the system when and where you can? Yeah, you know, I don't feel feel old. I feel like I've, I've been around for, for a long time, but I don't feel like my body's old. I've had a few injuries, but nothing mm -hmm. too crazy. Um, that bothers me, but uh, you know, the, the league is so fast and players are so quick. And for, for guys like myself, um, you know, my biggest strength is the way I think the game, and that's how I stay ahead of, of those certain faster players. And um, I feel like my brain is, is, is still working right, so <laughs> I'm able to, to keep up. Maybe it's got better over the years. I think as, as the body has. goes through changes, the brain right. improves. Right. Yeah. Uh, since you mentioned your body, I came prepared. I had these yeah. pictures already set here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, a couple of the injuries you've gone through, yeah. you documented on social media. Right. We'll show it on the screen. But yeah. oh my goodness, the ankle injury, and then when you got hit in the mouth with the puck, and, and you had what, like full dental and palate reconstruction? I yeah. So I lost eight teeth in that. Oh. Uh, I had oh. Eight or nine root canals and. Um, I have implants, teeth are implants in my mouth, and yeah, that wasn't fun. Um, the ankle is, has been great. Uh, you know, I, I still have a plate in there. Yeah, and that was that was at practice, I, I think, think practice, in New yeah. Jersey. Thomas Hurdle. Oh, well, you didn't have to name his name. <laughs> he jumped right on my back. And, <laughs> but I mean, that that was obviously a freak incident. Puck to the mouth was a freak incident. I know you also had arterial bleeding, um, also a freak incident, which you said was near life threatening. Yeah, that was internal bleeding is basically what it yeah, was. Yeah, my right thigh. We were um, we got hit and I got hit in Edmonton. We were flying home after the game. And, um, I, I felt like a Charlie horse. I didn't know what exactly was going on, and um, we kept an eye on it overnight. It kept bleeding just basically into my leg. The artery was uh, there was a hole in it, so it was just my leg was filling up with blood. And overnight, uh, we rushed to the hospital in the morning, and the doctors were able to uh, to fix it up before it got too bad. The stuff that you documented there on Instagram. Why did you do that? I think I, I think I know the answer, but I'm curious from your perspective. I would do it too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't realize uh, the sacrifices that uh, yep. that we make. Um, you know, you see the the lifestyle and, and the money and, and all that stuff, but you don't realize how much work and, and what what goes into it. I mean, you know, this is your life after hockey, and you know, once we're done playing this sport, we still have to live the rest of our lives. And, just to, to show people that, uh, you know, I guess I guess we're people too and we're humans. All right, we're going to get into baseball here. Uh, I even have a change of wardrobe. You know, I got to I gotta get the green and gold out you here. You got the Chase t-shirt underneath there or what? No, absolutely not. You might. Uh, but I'm just curious how a Canadian like yourself, uh, number one, got into baseball, and then number two, eventually got out of baseball. By that, I mean you chose to pursue hockey. So let's begin with how, how did you get started with baseball? Sure. Um, so I started playing baseball. And for as long as I can remember, I don't know exactly how old I was, I played baseball, lacrosse, mm -hmm. and hockey. Uh, lacrosse was a big family sport. My mom played for the, the team, field lacrosse team for Team Canada. My grandpa's in the lacrosse hall of fame. And Your dad's a ref, right? Dad was a ref in the yeah. National Lacrosse League. And, uh, so they were kind of pushing me towards lacrosse, but I just love baseball. I love the Blue Jays. Uh, 
growing up watching them win the back to back World Series in the in the 90s there. Um, yeah, it's been that long since they since they've won, but uh, yeah, I love the sport. And uh, when I got to I think 12 or 13, it was either hockey or or baseball, and I figured I had a better chance of going somewhere with hockey, so I stuck with it. But uh, I still miss miss baseball. And was it that cut and dry? Like at some point, you truly realized, hey, I love baseball, but hockey's my thing this is where maybe I have the best chance did you really have to make that like pivotal decision at that um, age yeah I think around 13 I was playing uh, the highest level that you can in in my hometown of London I mean Canadian baseball is not yeah. on par with what it is out here or, or in the states but it was still a pretty high level of, of baseball and um, you know obviously I was playing the highest level of hockey but uh, at that point I was one of the better hockey players in in the area and uh, figured that I should uh, stick with it. All right, so I guess we're going to pitch to each other, take some batting practice. You ready for some hardball? Let's do it. All right, I got to change clothes here. I'll be right back. Coming up on Shark Central. I think if a team or, or, or individual players aren't playing well, myself included, then, you know, I think it's up to us as as professional athletes to admit it and, and discuss it. And um, we expect better of ourselves. And I know the fans expect better of us. Time now for our fun Finn fact, presented by Carl's Jr. Let's not play this down here. What was the competition you won as a kid? The national competition you won twice. What national baseball competition did Logan Couture win as a kid? Time now for our fun Finn fact. Presented by Carl's Jr. What national baseball competition did Logan Couture win as a kid? What was the competition you won as a kid? Yeah. The Twice? Hit, run, and throw. The Maybe national... Throw. Wait, wait, wait. Let's not play this down here. The national competition you won twice. I did, yeah. At what age? I think I was 9 and 10. It's You hit off a tee, you threw a ball as far as you could, and it had to stay straight, <laughs> and then you ran around the bases, and they added all those scores up. You know what? We need to warm up on the tee first. I sure. feel like. No, let's let's give it a couple whacks. Now you're, you're you throw right, but you hit left. Correct. Kind of like I guess shooting left, probably golf left. Golf too. left. Yeah. All right. We want you to to take nice cuts here, but you know what I'm saying? Not too hard. Too hard. We we need you tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the last time you swung a bat? I actually did something this summer with. Uh, Sportsnet in Canada. Yeah. Anson Carter, we went out to uh, to a field by my house and yeah. threw the ball around. He pitched to me a couple times. He's a baseball guy too? He was. I think he played at Michigan State. Oh, wow. He was uh, he was on scholarship for baseball and hockey. Wow. Yeah, so. Now, you like your swing? Because I got to say, all lefties, they look nice. Like the swing looks smooth I and that. Don't love my swing. I like it. I love lefty swing. When you see it here on video, I think you're going to like it. Oh, no. <laughs> look at that. Going right back up the middle, no pull. Yeah, so, you know, we'll, we'll get a little warm. We'll, we'll end this thing off with uh, throwing to each other. All right. Oh, that's not a good one. Um, it won't be your first, you know. Injury to the face. Yeah, you know, you're used to just keep it down. You're used to that. Below the head, if you can. <laughs> hey, so like this season, right? And even going back a couple seasons in post-game situations, and you know things aren't going well. You're one of the guys to speak with so much honesty. We haven't put together an effort against a top-quality team. Can't blame the ice. Both teams playing it. So, um, simply, we just didn't play well enough. And that's not new, right? but what's in that for you? I think the easier thing to do a lot of times would just be to get it over with or to avoid the situation. What's in that honesty for you? The fans love it, but what do you get out of that? Um, you know, I'm a fan of, of sports. I've, I've watched a lot of sports growing up. And the one thing that I never liked is when I watched my team play and they didn't play well and then no one no one admitted it or no one talked about it in the media after they, they kind of sugarcoated it and that always irked me as a as a fan. Mm -hmm. I think if a team or, or or individual players aren't playing well, myself included, then 
you know, I think it's up to us as as professional athletes to admit it and, and discuss it and um, we expect better of ourselves and I know the fans expect better of us and at that point in the year we, we weren't playing well enough. Yeah, that may be it, but we got to figure it out soon. Uh, there's no excuse of the ice being bad. Uh, we weren't very good. Oh, it's a pop out. I don't know, you're getting under it a little bit there. That one might be too heavy for you. You want the smaller one? Oh, oh, I see he's chirping. Okay, I got it, all right. See, so what is it with Canadians where they like breed you guys to all shoot left in the NHL? Seriously. You know, I, I golf a lot with my buddies in the summer and the buddies that, that golf left are hockey players. And some with the, the hockey players, so we always swing left and, and golf left. I don't know what it is. This is so weird hitting off a tee. Honestly, it's probably been 20 years. I know, same with me. It's been forever. 15 years at least for me. Eh, you know. That was 20 years ago. What is it? 20 years ago, you just reminded me it was... Oh, I got under it. You reminded me I'm turning 30 soon, so... Yeah, you got any plans? That's a big birthday. I don't know. I, I think we're on the road, as we are... I mean, it's at the end of March. Late March, yeah. Yeah. We're always on the road, it seems. So I think we're somewhere. But, I mean, invitations will be coming out, right? Well, yeah, you'll get them. <laughs> you'll be the first one to get it. <laughs> so... I'm asking this purely hypothetical. Yeah. Um, and I know you have a lot of leadership in your background, but should the opportunity ever arise in the NHL, is like is the C part of your your DNA? I mean, it's not not something that I wake up every day and say, "Oh, right. want to be a cap." Sure. I think with our team, what's so special about our group is there's so many leaders on our team, and 100%. You don't have to have a letter on your jersey to be a leader. And, um, you know, it's really not something I think about. If somebody, if somebody said that, Logan, I want you to do it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You, you, you feel like it's in you to, to do that. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would welcome it, but I mean, we've got, yeah. I've been very lucky. I played first, Rob Blake was my first captain. Yeah. You know, then Jumbo. Jumbo, yep. And then Pav, so um, some very, very good leaders. To your point though, and that's why I said hypothetical, <laughs> there's so many options. Right. It's like. It's not even like a, a, a finite, or a, it's not even a tangible conversation because there's so many different guys in that room that could do it. All right, so reminisce with some Jays. Sure. Uh, Paul Molitor, probably. Yeah. Joe Carter. Roberto Alomar. Roberto Alomar. John Olerud. Mm-hmm. Tony Fernandez. See, I can go. I can play this game with you here. Carlos Delgado. Uh, yeah, Vernon, well, Vernon Wells was, oh, was my guy. Oh, man. When he had those good years in Toronto. Were there guys for you on the Jays that were like, oh, Logan wants to be like this guy? Yeah, uh, I mean, just recently, Jose Bautista, Ricky Romero, JP and Sibia. Those were guys when I first broke into the NHL that I was able to meet and get to know. Yeah. And just knowing Jose and uh, all the success that he, he had yeah. from really no one wanting him. Yeah. It's pretty special and he's an, he's an awesome person. Same with same with Ricky. I mean Ricky just announced his retirement from baseball and just watch him come up as, as a high first round pick. Yeah. Now I know you are watching a lot of baseball during the season because <laughs> you're not you're not very active on Twitter during the hockey season, understandably so, you're a busy guy. But all of a sudden I'll see like midsummer, oh, the Jays, or like you can't you can't help it, can you? It's like, no, you're I, on the couch, you're watching. I'm gonna say I probably watch ninety percent of the Blue Jays games. Oh my gosh. I probably watch about fifty percent of the A's games. If they were a little What? That much? Yeah, if they were a little earlier. I mean they start at ten thirty right, right. sometimes for me. I mean I, th I catch at least a couple innings most nights. Because there's nothing else. Look at you. Watch, I know. And I like the A's. Like, what music are you listening to these days to get you going? I mean, I love Drake, <laughs> obviously. Now, is that... Wait, wait. Is that because he's Canadian? It, or? it has something to do. I mean, I like Drake. I like okay. The Weeknd, sure. who's also... You like, you like that genre, but you like Drake for a couple reasons. Correct, yeah. Got it. It helps that he's from Toronto. and That too, yep. Close yep. to where I'm from, so... No Logan Drake encounters yet? Uh, I met him, I've met him twice actually. Uh, he had a concert at SAP Center and we, we got him a jersey, me and myself and Jamie McGinn. 
and uh, he actually wore it. He had an after party thing that night, so we threw the, the Black Sharks jersey on and wore it. Oh, nice! Pretty cool. And uh, then we, at the All-Star game, um, he came, he performed in the second intermission, and he came through and said hi to everyone. That's awesome. You know his real name? Aubrey. There you go. Aubrey gonna, Graham. Get, oh my gosh. See, I was going to try and like you can't trick you on that. All. This guy. Big trick, man. All right, let's see. Uh, now, again, if I hit you, I'm sorry in advance. That's all good. I won't hit you. Coming up on Shark Central. I'm going to hide behind this L screen about as fast as I can. So here you go. Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> I went right by his right foot. We're here to help each other, yeah. right? right? I'm here to throw you strikes. You're here to hit laser beams. Right out of the park. I'm gonna hide behind this L screen about as fast as I can, so here you go. Whoa. Oh, jeez! <laughs> I went right by his right foot. <laughs> I felt a little breeze. <laughs> this is, this is That's dangerous. retaliation Logan's hoping to get on me right now. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> All right, so. I gotta know, out of the guys in the league right now mm -hmm. that you've either played with or play against, who are the guys? And if you, you don't have to name a bunch, but who are the guys you think you'll still be keeping in touch with at age 65? Uh, <laughs> um, I've got some really good friends that uh, no longer play here, unfortunately. Um, Jamie McGinn and Jason Maris when I first broke in. Um, Alex Stalock, I lived with in the minors. Chris Tierney and Dylan DeMello. Uh, I actually just saw them the other night after we played Ottawa. Sounds like they trade all your friends away. It's the way it's been. I mean, <laughs> someone's got to talk to Doug for me. <laughs> Think he can do it, Brody? Uh, you know, I might pressure him a little bit. You tell me your list of guys you want to keep and I'll make sure I'll All right, them. all right, I will. Yeah, that's crazy though. Like a lot of those guys are departed. So, like, you guys talk on a regular basis in season or are you too busy? Yeah, like I talked to, I mean, Chris and, and Dylan were just traded. You just saw them too. Traded this year, but we, we talk. I mean, I talk to Chris a couple times a week, whether it's through text or FaceTime or, yeah. or something like that. Um, and then uh, Demers and McGinn um, every once in a while. So, I mean, that tells me right there, you guys are true friends. You're not just colleagues. Right. And like I said, you will be at age 65 trying to hit the golf ball around a little bit. I'm together, I'm sure. For sure, absolutely, yeah. All right, couple more. Yep. Woo! Let's just make sure we give you a good one, we can end on a good Let's get this one. All right, here we go. Who's it? Let's get that bread, is that is that what the boys say? Let's get that money. Oh, oh yeah, all right, all right. Snoop Dogg, did you hear that the other night? When he called the uh, Kings game? Hockey one-on-one -on -one with yep. Snoop Dogg, yep. man. So, wait a second. Now, you saw that on Twitter. Yeah. I, I lost my, you know what? It was unbelievable. Hey, let's get some money. Come on, hey. Doty, Doty, Doty. That's my dog. Get there. Take a shot. Take a shot. Who want the money? Who want the money? So, like, what are your thoughts on, like, how much are you looking at social, like, during the year? Oh, uh, I mean, days off. Yeah. Quite, quite a bit. Yeah. There's a bunch of people tag you and stuff, and they right. they talk. People talk about you, right, on a daily basis, right. I mean, most I, people that for most people watching, that's weird. Most people don't talk about them on a daily basis, right? Yeah, I mean, I check Twitter and you know read up on whatever's happening that day, and I follow sports so much, so I'm I'm on my phone and following different games, um, you know, whether it's basketball or football or, or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. So Snoop Dogg. That's uh. It was unbelievable. Hands up. Oh, watch oh. out. Oh, he stole on him. He fired on Cuz. Hold on now. Oh, get it cracking then. Let's go. Snoop Dogg in the house. Let me see some. I think Randy Hans on the way out. I think, I think so. What's Snoop Dogg's real name? I don't know. Calvin Brodus. There you go. I, I just, I'm bragging at this point. Dion, go get cracking, like Dion. Like yeah, him. go get him, Dion. Get him, Dion. Move, Dion. Get out the way. All right, here we go. Hold that one a little too much. All right, one more. One more. All right, let's get it. Let's get you a good one here. That was good. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I felt that one from here. Did I hit any out of the park? Did 
just a bit outside. <laughs> oh, that's a ground out. I didn't see this either. Exit velocity, 76.8. Really? Launch angle, 17 degrees. Oh boy. <laughs> that's nothing. And the pitch, by the way, you're throwing, you threw a crisp 34.8 miles an hour. That can't be right. What, what do you think you're throwing heaters over here? It's more than 30 miles per hour. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let me see if I can throw this one hard then. I don't know yeah, if I want okay, to. Now I poked the bear. Here we go. Wait, uh, where's the helmets? Yeah. Oh, I won't throw it too hard. Oh, I shouldn't have swung at that. Is that one any faster? Uh, tw wait a second. Oh, it doesn't have a, a 37? Okay, a little bit. My launch angle was minus two. It's probably not good. Oh, popped it up. Getting on you. 40, 40, yeah, 40. Yeah. <laughs> this is low. Can't keep up. And his 41 mile an hour heater <laughs> caught me by surprise. <laughs> All right, so just a quick health check here. Still good. You good? Arms a little sore. I need oh no, don't say that. No, I want, no, no, you're perfect. But I'm good. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, so this has been a pleasure. And um, just, uh, this is a cool thing to find out about you, that, that you love hockey, right? Like, no question. That's, it's your job, it's your passion, but uh, like, this is, this is pretty close. Baseball is, is a love of mine, yeah. I can tell by, I can tell by your, your pitching and your swings and everything else. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. So. Any chance we'll ever see you do anything with baseball at some point in your life? Um, For fun, yeah, after hockey. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, that's something I thought about. I mean, I love this game so much. Um, maybe down the road I can find some way to get into it. I mean, you never know. Yep. Having a good season this time around? You guys enjoying uh, where, the, where the season has taken you so far? You know, we have, I think, um, this group, the expectations were so high with the trade. Absolutely. The signings and everything that we made. And Doug, uh, Doug made the moves to make us successful. We didn't start the way we wanted to as a team. And it took us a little bit to get going, but uh, I think right now we're playing the way that we're capable of. And um, this is the true Sharks team that you're seeing now. And we just want to keep improving uh, down the, the stretch here into the playoffs. So coming from a true Ontario boy, I know you go back every summer. I know that that is your home. Not taking that away from you. You feel like the Bay Area and almost being here now 10 years, do you feel like California and, and San Jose is like, it's approaching that at least? Yeah, I mean, it's- Is it part of you? It is definitely part of me and I've been here for a decade. So. Yeah. It's a long time in someone's life, especially it's like, well, it's a third of mine. So. Yeah, right. Um, I just recently bought a house out here and uh, you know, I'm starting to, uh, to get that feeling. Do you say hello yet? No, no, no that's not in this vocabulary. Never will be. Go, well, you stay around here long enough and it might happen, it might happen. <laughs> I still I stick with the Canadian uh, A. Oh know. yeah, see, at least you know it, at least you know it. Hey, Logan, appreciate this. Best of luck to your J's and my A's this yeah. season. And um, Oh, oh, I like that. See, that can't end the show any better.